Welcome back to Jack's Tech Corner. Now this is another lesson in our Windows 2008 server series. Today I thought I would show you how to actually um, set up a user's account um, and also set up a user's folder very quickly and efficiently. We're also going to look at creating OUs. Now what an OU is is an organizational unit. It's just a way of organizing our Active Directory a little bit better. So let's go ahead and get started by opening up first the um, computer here. Now the first thing we have to do is set a place for all of our shared file folders to be. Everybody should have a file folder on your server to better maintain all of their work. And it gives you a very easy place to back everything up from. So it could either be on this physical server or it could be on one of your other servers that's a part of your domain. Uh, such as where we work at, we actually created what's known as the file server where we store all the files for the entire network. But for this demonstration, we're just going to go to the C drive here. And it's always best if you set these servers up to partition your uh, drives down. I know we didn't talk about that, so if you have to find out a little bit more about partitioning, uh, look at partitioning and have a C drive with all your Windows systems file and if you're using one physical server then maybe have a D drive over here maybe even another hard drive in that server uh, to store your files on that just protects the files themselves in case something happens to your operating system it gets corrupted and you have to uh, start you know uh, reloading operating system you're not going to mess with the files at all so that that's a good a uh, good suggestion I have for you there so with that said let's go ahead and double click our C drive we are going to bring this up just a little bit okay once you're in here there's a folder called users already once you set up your Windows Server 2008 now if there is not just go ahead and create a folder called users I want you to right click on that users folder and I want you to go down to share and do advanced sharing now with your advanced sharing you're going to need to click on advanced sharing the button right in the bottom there so it's going to click on advanced sharing and we're going to share this folder as users set your permissions everyone should have change and read access if you do not do that the folders below this particular folder will not work properly they won't be able to gain access to this folder, no matter how much permissions we give them I also add the administrator to this folder so I can always back it up and uh, get this file folder ready to be uh, backed up for you know everybody I can back up all their files you can click OK click OK and close we're going to go in here for a minute because I want to delete this file folder this is one I had uh, created earlier once you have your users folder set up we don't have to create individual folders in there for each person and what we're going to do there is we are now going to click on start start and we're going to click on administrative tools Once you click on administrative tools, what you want to do is come up here to Active Directory Users and Computers. Let's click on that. We're going to open that up. Now, once we have this open, what I like to do first of all is create a organizational unit based on all your users. Now what I mean by that, you can see here I have a OU called Accounting. We can also have a new OU. So if you go to New, Organizational Unit, we can have a new OU. Uh, and these are just different departments within your company, uh, within your school or buildings or whatever. So we're going to do a new organizational unit. Um, we'll say this one will be um, 
how about the projects maybe project management so projects you can protect this container from accidentally deletion so that way it doesn't get deleted and click OK now here's projects now once you have your OU created you want to do new do a new OU inside of there and call it users click OK now we have users created now you can come in here you know if you don't want to be fancy just put everybody in this one here but what happens is it starts to get to a point where it becomes unmanageable and uh, really quickly so I always suggest not to put people all in there just leave that for your basic ones that's uh, set up by the server and create your new ones here so we'll go in here we're going to create a new user so if you come up on the top toolbar it says create a new user in the current container we're in a container let's create a new user this user's name is going to be Joe Brown now the logon names I see a lot of companies do this many different ways it's totally up to you how you want to set it up some people do like Brown dot Joe you know now this is how your users are going to log on to the system we like to do just first initial last name Joe Brown J Brown right click next give it a password now I suggest when you're setting these user accounts up just to give it a basic generic old password so we'll do that now here it says user must change password next logon so that means they're going to use your default password once they log on to the system then what's going to happen is it'll tell them you need to change your password now watch what happens here user cannot change password if we want to make a password permanent but watch what happens when we click at we get an error message right away you cannot check both user cannot change password and user needs to change password well that's kind of a common sense mistake right now if you uncheck that then you can check here and have a permanent password if you wish I don't suggest that it's very unsecure to do that password never expires again it's going to say the specif this you specified that the password should never expire the user will not be required to change the password at the next login. Once again, it's going to kick you out of that. The password should expire, and we'll talk about that when we get a little bit more into policy. It's about the password policy and how you should set that up. Um, if something should happen to this account, you can always come in here and disable the account. But we're going to say he needs to change his password. Click OK and finish. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to have that home folder created for us we need to have a we call it the U drive some companies call it the H drive for home totally again based on however you want to do it what's going to happen though is this is where it's going to map a network drive now mapping a network drive means every time a user logs on to your uh, domain controller onto your Windows server when they log on to their workstation they're going to get a drive or a file folder on that workstation or on another uh, server such as a file server somewhere sitting on your network um, that they're going to keep all their files in that they work on every day and we'll talk about that later down the road but we're going to create that right now so if I right click on here I go down to properties we go right into profile now what we're going to do here in profile is we're going to connect and we're going to connect it to a U because that's what I'm used to doing. It's backslash, backslash, and then the server name. I just called this one home server, I believe. Home server, that folder users, where we have it at. Now that server name could be any uh, computer name that you have on your network. Users and then we're going to do a uh, parenthesis sign username and a parenthesis sign again I mean a percentage sign I'm sorry percentage username percentage click apply that should immediately change to their username if you type their username in there it doesn't quite do the same thing I found that if you put that in there that that wild card use that throw it in there click OK now what we really hope that happened here 
is that now we're going to open up computer again. Let's go back into the computer. And we'll bring this up a little bit so you can see it. Now if you go into users, there should be a folder here, Joe Brown. That is the folder that is actually the folder that is set up now for J Brown. And if you look at your security, it already gives J Brown or Joe Brown full control over that folder. Administrators also have full control of that folder. Users, you can actually take the users out of here. You don't want users reading this, so I should just get rid of that, that altogether. All you gotta do is click on edit. See where it says everyone you can remove. I uh, we got an error there. Let's remove this one. Oh, it's inheriting. So here's what we need to do, folks. Start advanced. I think we'll talk about that in the next lesson. Yeah, we're going to have to look at that in another lesson. What it's doing here is it's inheriting the settings from the very top here. What I mean by that is it's picking them up from here. If you see everyone has these accesses here and users have those. You can actually take this, uh, read and execute here. We can remove that. Users, remove that. Click apply. Continue. Just like so. Now if you open that up and look, you should see that they should be gone. And they are. Now it's just Joe Brown has access and the administrators. You don't want the rest of that uh, to be in there so just go back to that top folder and remove that stuff out of there. But we do want to make sure um, click OK on that. Under sharing that everyone has changed and read access and the administrators have full access under the sharing properties not under the ownership one. This other one is a different security. Not under here. We don't want everybody listed in there because we don't want that to trickle down through all of our folders. So there you go. That's how you create that. I want to show you a couple more things here. You can do an Active Directory with his account just real fast. I don't want to keep you here too much longer. We can do an address. You can keep track of people's addresses in here. This is the account information. Um, we'll look at password policies and find out how the account can actually get locked. Um, these are different settings down here. Uh, smart card is required for interactive login. You know, there's tons of different settings we can do with these user accounts. Profiles, this is if you have a login script. Uh, maybe you want to run something that updates the computer each time. Um, but maybe we'll look further down the road at some Windows update services. Uh, I'm also looking at putting a lot of this content together, folks, on an online course um, where we'll start with Windows Server and work our way down through it. I'll teach you each aspect along the way. And then at the very end, uh, you'll have some kind of certificate stating that you completed a course in Windows Server 2008. So if you're interested in that, start emailing me. I'd like to hear from you. We'll talk about member of when we start getting into some policies and security groups. Remote control, enable remote control. Um, to remotely control or observe a user's session, select the following checkbox. This will allow you to actually uh, view their sessions when they log in. And we'll talk about more of this stuff as we go through. This is for terminal services. We'll talk about that later on. And that is how you create an account and set a user uh, folder up on your server. 
Hope you've enjoyed this short tutorial. I think it was short anyway. On creating a user account in Active Directory. Understanding now OUs and what their purpose are. How you can uh, leverage those to your benefit. And how to create a users folder just simply based on their login profile. So until next time, keep those servers going, folks. Work on them. Try to understand it a little bit of time, especially if you're the IT person that was deemed uh, Mr. and Mrs. IT for your office. Watch these videos, and uh, maybe you too can get your domain controller, your server, just a little bit more tweaked. I'll see you back here next time on Windows Server 2008. Bye for now.